Hello biologists and in today's session we are going to be looking at practical investigations to do with osmosis. In the previous video we had a look at the theory of osmosis and some good terminology to do with how uh, different solutions can impact on plants and animal cells if you do want to have a recap of that and the terminology used. But for today I'm going to focus on one of the main experiments that you would get in your exam which is to do with how osmosis impacts on plant material. Now what they normally use here is some kind of a vegetable such as a, a carrot, a parsnip or a potato. Now in the experiment I'm going to show you today I've used a potato in this particular example and what they would normally do is cut your vegetable, in this case potato, into several different pieces and they would place these different pieces of potato into different concentrations of solutes. It's normally sucrose concentration that they use for this. Um, so when I'm cutting my potato pieces, it's really important that my potato pieces are the same length and ideally from the same potato so that any solute concentrations within the cells should be the same. So here are some control variables that are taken from your mark scheme. So once I've got my potato pieces and the cuts are the same length, um, what I then need to do is prepare my solution. So in this particular example, I've just used pure water and I've used water with 40 grams of dissolved sugar in it. It's really important that these are the same volumes of solution. So I've used 150 millilitres in this particular example. So before I put my potato cylinders into my solutions, it's really important that I have to weigh my potato cylinders before I put them into my solutions so that I can see the impact that these different solutions have on the mass. So mass is what I'm measuring, my dependent variable. Now, I put my potato cylinders into my different solutions and it's really important that I keep them in there for the same length of time. Anything in the red box on this video is taken directly from your mark schemes. After my time's up, in this, which case uh, I've used 40 minutes for this particular example, I need to take my potato pieces out and I dry them. It is really, really important that I dry my potato pieces or any vegetable you've used in this experiment because I have to remove the excess water because water has mass. And that water, that mass that the water has will impact upon my results because that is what I'm measuring. My dependent variable here is mass. That is what I am measuring. So here you can see my potato mass before and my potato mass after my investigations in the different solutions. On this next slide here, I've just put them into a table so it makes a little bit more sense. Now, I've also calculated here the change in mass. So my change in mass here, my mass uh, after, take away my mass before. Um, as you can see here, my mass here is positive because my potato cylinder has increased in mass. So my change in mass in grams it increased by 0.06 grams. My sugar solution, my potato cylinder lost mass. It went from 2.85 to 2.76. So it lost mass, so it's a negative number here. It's also important that I calculate a percentage change in mass using this formula here. So I, the way I interpret this is the change over the original times 100. So my change divided by my original and then I times by 100 to get 2.190. So here are my percentage changes in mass. Really important use percentage change in mass because it takes into consideration the starting masses. Potatoes here have different starting masses. It's very, very difficult to get your potatoes or vegetables, whatever you use, into the same mass. So by using percentage change in mass, it takes into consideration that starting mass of the potato. So in sugar solution, um, my potato lost weight, but in distilled water, my potato gained weight. And here are my explanations as to why. Now, if you want more information on this, please look at the previous video, which explains this in a lot more detail. But this is for, in a red box. It's taken from your mark scheme. Now, other questions that I have seen on osmosis are things like this. So in this particular experiment, as you can see here, they've looked at the mass, percentage change in mass of potato at different concentrations of sucrose concentration. And what I have seen in exams is they ask you to, how can I use this information to determine the water potential of the potato cells? And in order to do that, you would have to have a look at where this line crosses my x-axis, which in this case is 0 0.3. What you would then do is have a look at this on a table of known um, water potentials. So in this case, my water potential of my cells is here. 